Welcome back to Inside with Brett Hawk. I'm a swim nerd. We're all swim nerds. We're joined today by head coach of the LA Current, legendary David Marsh, and four-time Olympic medalist, Abby Weitzel. What is up? Hello. Good to see you guys. <laughs> yes, yes. What's going on, everybody? We're back. I read a lot of pizzas going on over here. Man, right now. I'm telling you, David, every, every time I see a photo from one of the swimmers, they're eating some brilliant pizza that I want to get my hands on. No, I went over and got uh, Jack one today, and, and uh, he takes it without cheese, of course. But he still says, even without cheese, these are the best pizzas he's ever had. So you, you know it's legit. Yeah, yeah, best pizza, best pasta, espresso is amazing, everything. Mm. They got it going. Maybe a little bit of vino every now and then. Yeah. Who knows? They, yeah. Really, they, they seem to have picked the, the right destination. And I mean, even the, the the holiday break you guys had on the on the boats the other day, like where all the teams were out on boats, was that an organized trip? It seemed to be, right? I think it just depends. A lot of people, uh, the matches are set up so differently depending on what team you are. And so uh, I know like DC and us had um, – had like a week off like our week off that started and so um i know our teams were like oh a lot of us are going to capri mm. and the team like sent in a group chat like whoever wants to go to capri we're going at this time book your your, your ferry ticket and everyone ended up there and we all kind of scattered into different groups but um a lot of us ended up on a boat which was really fun and um, we got to go swimming and do all of that so it was it was a lot of fun yeah nice. we had a you know the uh, we grabbed a boat uh, jack and kristen and i grab the boat right at the last minute it was you know three hours 250 dollars to take a awesome like I don't know, it was a historic fishing boat around the island one time and, and uh very reasonable and things are uh, don't cost a lot here the the, the price i mean it's a buck or a euro for a really nice cappuccino it's four euros for a market for pizza it's uh uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty impressive here in, in Napoli. The 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 quality of things uh, it takes a little bit to get used to the hustle and bustle. The the the, the scooters driving to practice every day is like <laughs> we're not sure we're gonna live or they're gonna live. It's a little scary. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not, it's there's not no bro, there's no like lanes here. Yeah. Everyone's just mm. like yeah. this the whole time. We're in a giant bus, and the bus is not afraid of other cars, and the other cars aren't afraid of the bus. So it's it's pretty. Uh, it's an interesting drive every time, and it can be up to 45 minutes sometimes. So, yeah. I think after after being here for especially after a couple of weeks, you really learn to appreciate Naples. The people are super friendly; like they go out of their way. I mean, the the, the staff here at the Orient Hotel, and I've heard the other staffs at other hotels that the ISLs provided have been amazing. And and uh, uh, yeah, I think you know we have a ninth floor view of Mount Suius, so it's uh, you know we're looking over there at Pompeii and everything every day and across the water. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been I think it's a great place to have this uh, at, at a lot of levels, and uh, and the Italian public appreciates swimming as well. Nice, nice. Well, listen, um, this is Abby Watson. You're right. It's not Maddie. I think originally we had talked about having Maddie on. Someone in the chat said, did you make an announcement that Maddie was coming on, Nate, or something? Oh, you know what? Yep. I think that's what the, the title was because we put it out there this morning. You silly man. We well, got a, you've, had a lot of, you've had a lot of Australians on lately, so we thought you were bring Sorry, it's good, me. Good old American <laughs> back to uh, Red Hot I hope it's not just <laughs> this is amazing amazing speaking Sorry. of speaking of abby watsall uh, nate do you have a little little photo there of what do we got did i did i send it to you um did you send it to me tell me you're gonna pull it up come on man tell me you're gonna pull it up where is it do i have Let's to pull see. this thing up come i think on. i can get it all right good okay this one she was like eight years old oh. <laughs> no <laughs> No, wow. this was this was my run in uh, in the summer. Uh, I uh, actually was out on a trip in Alaska, and I ran into oh, her sister. Oh, my sister! Yeah, yep. that's yep. my sister. <laughs> yeah, Brett oh, wow. my sister about that? in Alaska. That's he cool. sent that to me. I remember I was in Tokyo, and he was like, "I met your sister," and I was like, "Which yeah. one?" And he's like. <laughs> You're Alaska's sister. And I was like, oh, Caitlin. <laughs> so random. Yeah, she lives so, there. so random. She was telling me about her world travels. She used to live in um, New Zealand, right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah, that's where she, she learned to whitewater raft. Uh, yeah. 
she yeah. was uh, a whitewater rafting guide out of college and mm. went like chased the summer basically in New mm. Zealand, Alaska, New Zealand, Alaska, and ended up meeting her now husband and um, just kind of stayed in Alaska and now lives there full time and is a teacher actually and still guides on the weekends. But right, yeah, great guide. She did an awesome job for us. And the best part of the the, the whole situation was we're, we're sitting on the bus just randomly talking, kind of getting to know each other because she's about to take my life into her hands and go down this uh, white water in Alaska. And so I'm kind of built some trust here between this woman. Right. And, yeah. uh, and the best thing is she, you know, we found out that I recruited you at one stage when I was the head coach at Auburn. So I actually came out and had, had um, some coffee, I believe at your house. And so I, I was telling her I've actually sat in your house and had coffee before. It was just so <laughs> random and weird. It was amazing. But that, that's funny. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So that's the start of the show. So listen, let's talk about some swimming here. Uh, David, just give us a little recap on the last meet that you had. Yeah, the last meet we had was uh, a bit of a bit of a, uh, a nail biter. We, we, we started off the first day, I would say probably our, our, I guess, overall our worst session as a team. Uh, we, we had high hopes to go in and, and uh, compete for, for, for the win. Uh, and probably played that a little bit too hard. We probably played up focusing on outcomes a little bit too much. So uh, the, we came back after the first day and, you know, Abby's on the leadership team. The leadership group got together and sort of decided to, to commit to a little bit more event by event and, and, and be more in the process mode the second day. And the second day we came out uh, uh, very impressively and, and, and really fought early on for a lot of points and, and uh, I mean, it, it, the unfortunate thing, Brett, is they know that uh, we have Abby for the skins if they go to freestyle. And unfortunately, now with being able to cut out the freestyle, uh, every team is successfully. The first thing they're eliminating is freestyle. So, you know, we're we're trying to fig figure out how to get Abby and some, uh, some other strokes <laughs> because uh, if, if they're going to avoid her in freestyle, we'll have to figure out how to, how to let them face her in some other things. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's been, so the, I guess the, the, the overall part of the, uh, of the result was that the points came from a lot of different places uh and and you know wasn't always predictable where they're going to come from which was great because you know when when maxine started us off with a win in the 100 freestyle you know abby uh doubled that up on the women's side and we just we just started rolling from the very beginning of the meet yeah yeah Abby, I was going to ask you something. It's uh, to me, it seems like it would be super easy to have kind of an Olympic hangover. You seem to be doing outstanding. You're you're killing your races and looking great. Is has there been anything in particular that you've consciously done to to enable yourself to have this great Olympics and then come back, you know, a few weeks later for the ISL and perform at a high level? Yeah, I think it was definitely. Um... I wasn't sure how it was going to go here, honestly. Um, I was I wanted to come and compete for Team LA Current because I love LA Current, and I wanted to help out as much as I could. And I honestly didn't really fully train after the Olympics. I mentally needed a break, and so I took some time to, to reset mentally and came here hoping to be able to help the team out as much as I could. And it turned out that the mental break was what I needed. And mm. Um, starting to get into it a little bit more. I think I'm racing my way back into shape, as David likes to say, which really helps. And I never got out of racing shape, you know. Um, yep. I only raced uh, four weeks before I got here. So I, I was never out of racing shape. And I think that's what really helped me is I'm such a racer. And um, the preparation is there in my mind. And so I, it was kind of like an instinct, diving off the blocks and getting my hand to the wall. And I think that's what really helped me. And um, just, you know, finding the feel of the water again and, and getting short course back is it's definitely a different race than long course. So kind of, I remember the first race diving in the first match and I was like, what am I doing? Where's mm. the wall? Oh, there's a wall. Oh, we got it. And so it was definitely confusing, but obviously there's so much racing here that after the first, first match, I had done so many races already. And so I was like, Oh, we're back into it. We're ready to go. So I think that that was pretty cool. Oh, awesome. And, and just kind of to that point, David, real quick, just touching on, uh, how, You've done. You do a real good job of kind of like knowing when to switch on and when to switch off. And and have you kind of addressed that with the team in terms of their performances? Yeah, I think the key is is to to be where they are. So they're they are all different positions. I mean, Abby's one of those swimmers. I guess a lot like Caleb, where even if they took a lot of time off, they're talented enough to 
to, to be able to get back and be competitive right away. We, we know that those that didn't train as much as long as they stayed you know, relatively fit would be able to race their way back into shape. Uh, Tom Shields is probably one of the most experienced person people at uh, doing World Cups back to back to back and really race, racing their way into shape. And he's been really good about talking to the team about believing that that will happen. And we have seen that happen. Then we've had the other side of people coming in, I think, in great shape and, and really did, did full preparation for this and have been uh, been able to, to, to really uh, jump into this. And really, instead of uh, working on getting in better shape, they've been able to sort of hit where they are and fine tune uh, all the way along. We've, you know, we've had the underwater camera out. Kim Bracken's had her mm. GoPro out every almost every day doing videos. There's analysis uh, by the by the coaches and the home coaches to to break down what they're uh, what they're working on each day, and and uh, there's real improvements being made here, Brett, which I, I think uh, some people would find interesting in that. And it, normally you think that you just come in here and you, you do what you do and you do your job as a professional and you leave. But we're looking for ways for them to get better, not only during this block, but also during the semifinal block, because we feel like for us to be competitive against Energy Standard, against London, against against uh, Cali Condors, we have to make the moves to improve. And, and so I think it's been a great effort by the whole staff uh, to look for ways to, to find you know, two tenths of a second here. And, and uh, today we were timing turns and, and balancing that kind of thing. Uh, and so and with, with the, uh, the the dining hall, dining staff is setting up behind us right now, but that's all right. It's all good. We, but we're, you know, we are just a team who is, is constantly looking for ways to get better, looking for like today, we did some time trials and events that they aren't uh, normally racing. So they could show us some other, uh, potentially some other, events that we might not know they can race at the level that can impact us. So we're we're in that mode right now, Brett. Yeah, we're searching like we used to at Auburn back in the days, trying to find people and, uh, you know, putting this thing together to try to build a championship team. Yeah, yeah. Well, that actually, like, um, leads us kind of into what we wanted to do next, and that is kind of talk about some of the, the lesser-known people that are making big impacts. Like, your roster's changed over quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys have people like Martin Malushin in now, Breno from Brazil, I think let off the relay in almost his best time in the 100. Uh, you have a young lady from Canada, uh, Ingrid, who has just broke multiple times now her own Canadian record over the last week. Uh, I think she's down to 55.6. Could you talk a little bit about getting Ingrid into the program, and is she taller than you? I'll let uh, Abby answer that first, and I'll come back with a, a, a interest, interesting answer for you. Go ahead. What is, what's your impression, cool. Ingrid? Uh, she's very confident, I would say, um, which is always good. I think she came in. I mean, she came in no one really knowing what she was going to do, and she stepped up behind the blocks, and she really wanted to win and get her hand to the wall, and that's what she did. And I would say that she's a really amazing addition to our team, and she walks around and and leads with confidence and i think that's really awesome and she is taller than me she's a tall girl she's tall so I, it was an interesting story with her because uh really picked her up as our last uh, free agent selection i was in i was actually in tokyo and had we were down to like three days left to pick our last couple of people and uh she, and i had been talking to to Tom and Dave Johnson during the meet, but, but surely you guys have some Canadians and they were telling me about the people they had. They had uh, Ingrid on the club and and said she was uh, didn't make the Canadian team, but she was she was a, a very good swimmer. Uh, so she was one of those really that, that, that we really took a chance on. When I heard she was tall, when I heard she was good underwater, and we were really looking for a relay only swimmer. I was really kind of searching for somebody who could uh, do the 400 free relay and maybe a medley relay position. I really wasn't looking at her swimming individual events. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously when she came in here, uh, even in the first meet, you'll see we put her in the 400 freestyle relay, didn't even enter in the 50 backstroke. So uh, we didn't even know that much about her. And, and uh, so we have been unbelievably thrilled at having her. Uh, she has uh, got, like, like Abby said, she's come in with, with a purpose to be here. In fact, I called her from Token. I said, are you fully prepared? Are you willing to be fully tapered when you get here? Are you willing to you know, do everything you need to do? And she, yes, yes, yes. I just want to be in the league. Give me a chance to be in the league. So I think it's an example of really, there are athletes out there that aren't even in the league this time mm. that probably can come in and make an impact. Uh, you know, Ingrid was a, a, is, 
is under a minute and 100 backstroke long course, but her she's crushing her lifetime best times short course. And I think this confidence, much like I'd say barrel experience when you were coaching her a couple of years ago, Brett, I think this is going to roll into world class swimming. We're going to see her in the world standings after this and in the future based on uh, this ISL experience. Yeah, and I think this is kind of an example here. Even even a couple of the other guys are about to mention, but you know, Ingrid's an example of um, how great this league is for swimming. You know, it's really changing the face of swimming, where it's giving you know young people and some older athletes opportunities to grow in the sport, to stay in the sport, and that's one of those things that's probably you know not spoken about enough. But it, that that's the beauty of this ISL and what it's doing for swimming, really. Yeah, I think I'll, my comment on that would be that, uh, you know, and Abby doesn't know the day, I don't think, when there wasn't professional swimming. You know, Rowdy Gaines arguably is one of the first professional swimmers. And, and but there was no system for pro professional swimming. Honestly, mm -hmm. there, even up to this point where the ISL started, was really not a system or uh, a place that really put your passion in professional swimming and and this has really changed that completely not not just the money because there's really good money involved in fact i heard you and maddie talking the other day about maddie talking about how she's made more money here than she's ever made in in all her uh, events of australia with you know olympics and everything and uh, uh i think that's part of it but honestly i think a bigger part of it is just the uh for many many of them is just to know that they're recognized as a professional swimmer they have their hotel room they have their food paid they have their transportation paid they uh, every race they have there they have the opportunity to win significant money uh every meet they can be as a team as a team they can collectively uh win some money just by someone making it to the roster for example they'll make about fourteen hundred dollars just to swim in any event in the meet even if they don't score one point mm -hmm. and that's significant and it's and it's really career changing for a lot of these athletes who often are sort of battling with their families on why aren't you getting a job? Why aren't you getting going in life? And uh, no, I'm a professional swimmer. That's why. And and the great thing is they all have an opportunity year after year to get better and better and better. And when we were able to draft uh, Abby last year and pull her into our team, you know, I mean, knew we had a franchise. Uh, we haven't even seen the best in Abby in this league. There's going to, you know, over time, she's going to develop into, I'm sure, one of the best swimmers that this league will ever have. So it, it's not just the very top swimmers, but it's also, and I think maybe more impactful and, uh, and felt even greater by the athletes who otherwise maybe were never an NCAA champion or even maybe in a finalist in NCAAs. You know, Brett Penfold comes to mind. I mean, right now, Brett P Penfold is our fastest relay, fastest relay swimmer at 46-1 out of all the people we have on the team right now. And uh, Brett's learning all the time how to get faster. We were working on his turns this morning I uh, mean, Jason's done a great job at Texas A&M with him, but I think uh, these are things that I find very exciting about the league and, and the reward and satisfaction and dignity that these athletes now have, have been able to call themselves professionals, I think is unique and historic, and uh, I hope we have a lot more in the future. Yep. Yeah, it's been exciting. I love watching these young, uh, young up-and-comers get a chance to, to get on the blocks and, and race uh, people like Abby, you know. Um, so speaking of that, Tomo uh, Zenimoto Voss, he is he's basically behind Beefy T. He's he's like your main guy right now. He's scoring tons of points for you guys. Uh, he's swimming lots of events. I think he's half Norwegian, half Japanese. Tell me a little bit about uh, Zenimoto. <laughs> I love Tomo. Yeah. Tomo's awesome. He's a uh... He's a quiet leader, but he's uh, when you get, when you get him talking, he's really awesome, and um, he's really shown up in the pool for us, which has been awesome. And he'll swim anything we need him to swim, and he'll do it well. And I think he's a really cool person to be. That's what one of my favorite things about this is you get to meet so many people that you wouldn't normally meet. And like I, um, just because you know, if they're not on the national team for long course. For Team USA, you know, I get to be on a team here with them, which is really cool. And and some people are better at short course, and they'll they'll shine here, which is awesome. And you get to see them in action, and you also get to meet people from. We have 18 different countries on our team. You get to meet people from all over the world that you would never meet or even talk to. And I think that's really cool. I've made some awesome friends here that I would have never gotten close to. Um, and I think that's really really cool. It's my favorite, one of my favorite parts about this league. But um, 
yeah, Tomo is one of those people that's just awesome, and I would have never even met Tomo if it weren't for that itself. So, yeah, yeah. Tomo's a, a, Tomo is the most one of the most versatile swimmers that I've ever seen. And interestingly enough, uh, he has this relationship with the water that's just beautiful. I mean, he he's often the first guy in the water and the last person out. Uh, he likes being in the water. He's one of the, one of those guys that just you can tell he just looks like a fish when he moves. He has really natural underwaters. Uh, I don't think we've seen the. I, I know we haven't seen the best of his swimming yet. Uh, so we were really happy when we sort of got him sort of lucky last year. Uh, and when I was sitting there in Tokyo watching the Olympics and he was doing his events and I saw him drop from 159 to 156 in the tuner fly. Given that he's an amazing underwater kicker, I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. He's going to be amazing at the ISL in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but between the Olympics and the ISL, he didn't swim much either. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was hard. I just, everyone wanted to take a break, and we were like, why is the ISL so close? And then we got here, and it turned out to be fine. So. <laughs> yeah. he, skateboarded. he took up skateboarding. You know, after, he said, after watching Olympic skateboarders, I wanted to take up skateboarding. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you could have broke your wrist so easily. <laughs> that would have been it. I, and, I, think uh, I, did, I, I think I did see that on Instagram, him trying to do a kickflip. So um, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, he's more natural on the water than on land, I believe. That that may continue to be the case. Are we he, all he had all his safety gear on, though. I got to give him credit. Yeah, he had. Right I there. think he was protecting his hands too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, he, so a little more about him, just so you know, so but your audience knows about him because you're going to hear a lot more about him. Is that he is a quiet, humble leader, leader kind of guy for sure. In in terms of. He's he's on task. Like you know, he he has a good relationship with his home coach. He has let us coach him more this year than he did last year, as far as mixing him into workouts. And uh, uh, I think the overall, you know, Patrick Plusky is really working on the most. But he's we're trying to move him toward uh, being sharper at his main events and yet expanding out a little bit into where we can put him. Like the tuner fly. Uh, I don't know if you've watched the way he swims, but he sort of swims in Japanese style. I mean, I've never seen anything but any, anyone but Japanese swimmers do that sort of delayed front of the stroke. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess old, in the old days, the Hungarians were doing that a little bit. But he has this pause out front when he does a 200 fly. And, and it's, it's really interesting to watch the way he conserves energy and uses his underwater kicks. Uh, I could see somebody like in the NCA program who may not be uh, you know, super talented above the water flyer using this kind of thing just to maximize their underwater speed, and he, he's able to do that when he uh, when he does these races. Uh, biggest thing I'm so pleased with is last year his freestyle wasn't very good. In fact, he split like 49 in one of the relays for us when we put him on a 400 free relay. This year he came back and had committed to changing and improving his freestyle. And uh, before he left for the Olympics, he had 148 long course 200 meter freestyle. So he's he's improved his freestyle dramatically. And so at the end of IMs now, it's not just hanging on and seeing seeing how uh, trying to have less people pass him. He's actually fighting very well at the end. But he went to 402, uh, the 4 IM the other night, which was uh, the Nordic record and the Norwegian record. He uh, he he blasted the last 50 freestyle. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Um, there's another young kid uh, that I was watching at the Olympics, uh, a young man from Ukraine. He's a sprinter. Uh, his name is Vlad Bukov. You and sure? On, uh, is you sure it's pronounced like that? I, I'm pretty sure it's Bukov. <laughs> Vlad, Vlad, Vladislav Bukov from Ukraine. Um, I, th- I think he just missed the final at the Olympics in the 50 free. I know that this the ISL is all about speed. It's about the skins. Missed the skins. I think he was fifth a couple days ago. How do you get this kid up there on that skins uh, where where all the points are? He needs to work on his start. <laughs> we all watched him do the skins the other week. Well, he did the skins. Yeah, we all watched him do the skins. And I had never watched him start before. And he, he like fell off the blocks and did one kick and came up. And I was like, <laughs> wait, was like, what just happened? And everyone's like, yeah, that's how he swims. And I was like, oh my Lord, we need to help him. <laughs> He's so good on top of the water, but he needs help on his start. And he only does one kick off the start and the turn. And I was like, Oh, we need to help him. <laughs> oh, he needs to learn a little bit, but he's—I love him. He's so funny. I like—I like him a lot. He's awesome. 
Yeah, I'd say he's a big project. So, uh, you know, again, he was a guy that uh, when I was at the Olympics uh, and we were down to the last few picks, we had some guy picks. And uh, he's the guy after Christian Golomev said he won't be there for preliminaries because his wife is uh, was pregnant now and they're about four weeks away from having their child. I was like, oh, crap, I need to find a sprinter. And literally from where I was talking to Christian, who's telling me this, uh, Vlad had just uh, come back from the semifinals of 53 where he didn't advance to the finals. And, uh, and I said, you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> fortunately, he speaks some English. Uh, speaks pretty good English, <laughs> actually. Uh, I, said, I said, I'm going to draft you. Uh, you're going to get a phone call tomorrow from Lenny Kraselberg. And uh, please, please say yes. <laughs> and, and, and he did. And uh, Vlad is super talented. Uh, he is, uh, like she said, the details are not good. Uh, he doesn't have a good turn. He doesn't have a good start yet. He... In the first meet, when he went that 21-1, it, 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 he was, I'm thinking, almost a body length behind the field on the dive. And by the time yes. he got to the wall, he caught everybody. Yes. I'm talking about, so good at talking about some of the best people in our sport. He caught <laughs> in the 25 in the water. So this guy has a lot of stuff. Honestly, in this little window of time, I don't know if we can get <laughs> near enough of what we need. In fact, we've tried to do probably more than we should. Uh, and I guess part of the problem actually in the last meet was I think he was thinking in his head a little bit more about three quick kick, uh, three quick kicks off the wall rather than his one giant kick. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we hope that during the seven weeks in between prelims and semis, He'll, he'll get to work on some of this stuff and be to be taking it to the next level uh, because he can be a star in this league. I would say in, in this short time we're in right now, uh, his, his specialty is a 50 freestyle. I mean, he's 23 one long force meter 50 fly, but his mm. turn is uh, not going to allow him to be very competitive in this league until he learns a better turn. He doesn't use underwaters at all yet. Uh, but like I said, he's brilliant above the water. Interesting guy. We, we really enjoy having him on the team. He's, he's, uh, he, he's, he, he started swimming at uh, four years ago, just four years ago. And in his first meet, he went 24-1, long course meters. And then he got plugged right into the Ukrainian national team. So he, he didn't have any sort of <laughs> slow ramp up into the sport. He went from not swimming to uh, the top in Ukraine. And that's where he's been. So, uh, what a he's super got interesting some, story. He needs to sort of back up a little bit and, and learn some more, more basics. Learn the basics. Yeah, and, and, and fortunately, he's interested in learning, and, and uh, we've, we've been trying to feed him enough but not uh, overdo it. Zoe Baker, you know, he's in her group, and she's doing a great job with trying to slowly give him a little bit more as, as we uh, you know, go step by step here. Mm, he's been watching Bruno Fratis too much, has he? You know, uh, I would love to get in with you and Bruno for uh, a good six-week period, Brett. So we need to probably arrange that sometime. Yeah, well, I got to I got to teach him some underwaters too. But uh, <laughs> um, hey, this isn't on on the list here, Nate. I'm going to go rogue here for a second. Ooh, um, rogue. But, but Abby, just uh, talk to us about Maddie Wilson. She has uh, performed really well. It's kind of been a surprise for everybody. You know how she's done this season. Talk to talk to us about her. Yeah, me and Maddie. Maddie's one of the people who I've gotten really close with, actually, who I would have never, like, been super good friends with. And me and Maddie, like, immediately when we started hanging out when we got here, we were like, we just talked about this. We are like, wow, we kind of just, like, clicked. Like, we're just good friends. Like, you know, those people you just click with. And um, it's fun to be in the events with her. You know, the 53, the 100 free, she's in there with me. Um, and she does a lot of doubles, like the two free double and the four free double for the relays. And um, we do the, the relay double and the 50 doubles right there together. And so it's really fun. I mean, we've, we've, um, we've been out there and just watching her succeed has been so much fun. You know, we've, we keep saying like, uh, I'll pull you out. You, you pull me home on the hundred cause we swim it so differently. And, um, or like just be like being next to each other. It's like, we're doing this together. You know, like we almost went the same exact time at one of the meets in the hundred free and, um, we were like, we did, we did it together. Like it was both of us. So it's been really fun. And she's like an amazing person and an amazing athlete and an amazing competitor. And she really loves to race. And so just seeing her out there being able to, to have fun. And I, she said multiple times that it's really cool to be on a team where she looks over and sees everyone really cheering for her, which we honestly are. And so I remember like watching her every time she has two free or something, everyone's screaming their head off. And, um, so it's really cool to watch her, watch her swim and watch her succeed. And I think she's having a lot of fun. And um, I'm really happy for her in that way, you know. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, keep us going, Nate. 
Let me let me make a comment on Maddie just because he, I think as you watch your races here, for she's a hunter. She's a hunter. Like, mm. uh, and, oh, by the way, we just we found out she got a kangaroo for one of her birthdays. <laughs> she, she won the best birthday present of anyone. There was one. She owns a baby kangaroo. Apparently. Like a real one. But a real kangaroo. Yeah, well, it's not a, a stuffed real animal kangaroo at on her farm. farm. Yeah, it, <laughs> it has been raised, and she does have a pet kangaroo. Yes. Don't uh, don't don't start spreading rumors like that, David. Now everybody in America is gonna think everyone's got pet kangaroos, all right? I, mean, I had to deal with that my whole college career. What? You got a kangaroo? Oh, Come on. No. Uh, she actually yeah, has one. But I, but I say she's a hunter in, in that uh, I said you I, I gotta know her at all before she came here and I just watched her race a few times and I'm like, I see like she comes off the wall and she does this thing where she just peeks across the lanes. Mm. And she and I said, You're looking for people, aren't you? She goes yeah, I like to catch people. I'm like, oh her last gosh. 50 of literally anything, or her last even just 25 of any just race beast. is like insane. Yeah. Like, it's insane. If you're out there, ahead of her, I feel sorry for you. Yes, yeah. if you're like within striking distance of yeah, the last 50, have, even you're in the usually fourth further ahead. So, well, yeah, usually I admit, way. in the 100 last time, I flipped with her at the 75. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, goodbye. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. Like, there's just no outrunning her the last 25. It's insane. She's so good a lot at the end of a race. And she is a wonderful human being. We, yes. we are loving having her on the team, and, and we, 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 we will retain her uh, for a long time. Nice. So is she teaching you guys how to do some jump roping or what? Pretty good so what? Jump roping. Oh, I jump rope too. I didn't bring my jump rope, but yeah. She loves to jump rope. <laughs> she does it. She's very disciplined. I mean, she's honestly the, the, the classic Australian professional that just does friggin' everything right, it seems like. She arrives early, does her activation she's 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 ready to move to any group that needs to be she's checking in with her coach coach mm. bishop back in australia to see what guidelines but coach bishop's not laying sort of specifics on her uh, i mean she she came from the olympics and went uh stayed in italy in between so that she could be part of this isl didn't get to go back home missing her family terribly and uh, from here she's going to go to israel and train in between these two so because of the quarantine situation right in australia yeah and, and she's so, not gonna get the home gilbert yeah, for will, a long time yeah, we'll that sucks. I, I know i feel so bad i'm always like i'm so excited to go home like i can't wait to go home and i've got to go home for a second and i'm like ah home and then i'm like you literally have to send me your address everywhere you go so i can send you a present every everywhere because mm. i feel so bad she's like wants to go home with the whole quarantine but yeah what are you gonna do Monday. yeah she's very committed yeah all right we got a quick question from the audience here coach from Paul Bowie, how did, how did you link up with Zoe Baker? <laughs> uh, so we have Imogen on the team, and Imogen came from uh, 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 came from her club, and she's a very fast 50 breaststroker. And I, I you know, we, since Brett Hawk turned me down, he wouldn't come and be a coach with us. <laughs> uh, I need to find somebody to take care of our sprinters. And uh, I met Zoe last year when she was working with Energy Standard. Although Imogen wasn't getting into races with Energy Standard, so I think uh, they're having a lot more fun in this case and, and working with us. Uh, uh, but Zoe's, yeah, Zoe's super sharp and, and uh, she's eager to learn. And uh, I was watching her give some tips uh, to Christopher yesterday on trying to transition his long 200 stroke into a 50 stroke. Just brilliant stuff. I mean, she studied the, in particular the 50 breaststroke probably like nobody has. And uh, uh, I think she's going to have she has a great future as a coach. I'll give you a little uh, fun fact about Zoe Baker. I don't know if anybody knows this, David. I'm not even sure if you know this, but uh, when I was a young up and coming swimmer in Australia, we put together a little pro team. Um, nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew anyone in the group, but we were just all desperate to be swimmers. And uh, one of the swimmers that we put together was Zoe Baker. And uh, we actually lived together in a house, a, a swimmer's house. And so Zoe and I actually lived together for a period of time. Now, my memory is not that great. I don't know if it was a month or if it was 12 months. But I know we, uh, I know we lived together. So. Okay. Crazy. Crazy. She didn't share that. She didn't share that. She had, she had nothing but nice things to say about you in spite of that, Brad. Oh, uh, she had every reason to hate me. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> All right, uh, we're kind of we're a little bit over time. I want to hit hit at least a couple more things. One thing that I'm super interested in because obviously we make our digital pace clocks in China. I I talk to China every single day. Uh, I wake up. Um, and there's obviously like no Chinese swimmers in the ISL. Um, there's a lot of unbelievable swimmers in China. Have you been on the phones calling China 
trying to get some recruits. Well, actually, better than that, the two the two Chinese that won gold medals are people that I've coached before. They both have been in the San Diego a couple times for some training camps. And Fifi, who won the 200 fly, we, that's her sort of given, she gives herself that American name. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a super delightful girl. As she, I know she would love this league. She would be a pleasure on the team because she's a very pleasant person. And then Steve, who won the 200 I am, that's the name he gives himself. Uh, Steve is a beast. I mean, Steve could swim. He would be like Tomo. He'd, he'd be like uh, one of these versatile guys in the league that could do almost any event. Extremely valuable. We'd love to have the Chinese in the league. I think they're a little more, a little tightly aligned with FINA. So I think they're they're uh, sort of trying to stay in that 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 more that camp than coming over here to the ISL. But I believe as people see uh, the success of the league, that more and more countries will allow their athletes to to uh, you know and their federations to to make the decisions to to come here and be part of this because what they get back after doing this league is is confident more race ready athletes i mean the, the one of the giant advantages i saw at european championships last summer when i was there with the israel team i saw the european championships the camaraderie that was happening around the pool deck it seemed to be new and and uh, to a whole nother level than it used to be where you didn't feel like there was such isolation between teams and i think that's part of why you saw the european championships be so fast last summer is because they're, they're getting to know each other here at the isl they're coming back together and it's it's not it's not necessarily a us against you. It's a lot more of just enjoying the sport and raising standards in the sport. Nice. Yeah, for sure. All the, I think it, when you get the opportunity to go hang out with a coach like yourself or like a Zoe Baker, how can you not be taking away just incredible amounts of information to make you a better athlete to go home for your country? Um, well, that's been, what Sonny's saying, right? Uh, for energy standard, you know. Our boy out there, Sonny's doing a great job with Energy Standard just as a backup coach and doing all the videography and all that sort of stuff and loving the experience. Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, all right, so you guys got uh, match number eight, meet number eight coming up here in a couple of days. We've got um, a big showdown against Energy Standard. Mm -hmm. uh, how you guys feeling? I think, we're, I think we're excited. I mean, I'm excited. I think everyone is learned a lot from the last three meets and having this little break um we had a double our our bye week already and that was a tough one um definitely felt that and i think everyone's able to reset for a day or two and get back into trading and everyone looks really good in the water and i think it's tuning up really well so um the good news is is that we we're going into this meet and everyone's i think um i think everyone's ready to like have one last big hurrah before uh we hit semis in a little in a few weeks and so i think um just kind of playing with the lineup even maybe a little bit and seeing what what happens and um you know getting some breaststroke in me i yeah. don't think you're gonna see me do breaststrokes <laughs> this year bad. she's not working we have a couple years here but uh i uh yeah, yeah last year we tried so. she did some, she some i did some the 50 year. it yeah. didn't go well <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> i don't know maybe you'll see me in a couple other strokes i don't know um i think the coaches are gonna play with the lineup um and even after the first day see what the second day might look like and so you might see me in a couple things i don't know maybe it depends on what the skins are mm -hmm. who knows so um david have you guys qualified for the semi already or does this match matter yeah so we're we're, we're at nine points and we if, if we're fourth we'll have 10 we have the tie break between uh, aqua and so uh the most aqua can get to is 10 so we would advance over them so, uh, of course, we'd like to go in and win this meet and uh, be competitive with Energy Standard and London Roar and Tokyo. Uh, all three teams are outstanding. Oddly enough, we actually match up in sort of the worst way against Tokyo. So every time we swum them last year and this year, it seems like that's our toughest match. We've been able to beat them, uh, I think, every time or most of the, most of the times. And, and, uh, and Energy and, and London, we're hoping they sort of will, you know, knock each other down a little bit with, with some of their superstars. Uh, but it should be a very interesting meet to see how it plays out. We've, and, and I do feel like we're going to be better than we've been at any meet so far. I think part of that's because our, our team does know they're in and they can sort of relax and just perform and, and be natural. And that, that always helps when they don't feel like they, they have to. They sort of, they sort of get to. Are you, get, are you getting Ryan Murphy back for the semis? Uh, yes. Yeah, Ryan's been back in the water uh, about four to five times a week. And uh, he'll be back. Uh, Christian Goldman will be back. 
Uh, Kathleen Baker will be back home training during this window of time with NC State. So uh, we expect we'll have a, a much stronger lineup when we get to the semifinals. And, and uh, uh, yeah, we, we, f we feel really good about our, our team. And uh, certainly depth-wise, we're a better team than we've ever been. And as we put together uh, all of our best combinations, I think we'll, we'll continue to get better and better. And most important, the athletes that we have, we had, a, again, a leadership talk about this, is that, is that the, the, I think they're committed to the process of improving between now and semifinals. And that's there is enough time to make substantial improvements, and I, and I think all of them will go home and and uh, look to get better. I mean, you got a guy like Ryan Held who isn't swimming that well here, but of course he's a beast, and he's going to be swimming with Bob Bowman, and he'll get in shape, and he'll he'll be he'll be ready to go when he comes back. Mm. Nice. Yeah, you need you need guys like Held. Um, Rooney had an unbelievable hunter freestyle, uh, pulled out that win. Those are the kind of you know, dig deep kind of victories that you guys need every single one of these meets. So, um, yeah. well, we'll let you guys go. Um, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Have good fun. Luck. We'll thanks be watching. Thanks for having and, us. Um, Thank you. Thanks, thanks go LA. Spread the word. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. Take care. Bye. All right. All right. All right, Brett. Um, Tom Dean dropped him on Monday. Yep. Tomorrow we have Braden Holloway, NC State Wolfpack. Um, what'd you guys talk about? Oh man, listen, uh, we talked about everything we could. I, I was just inquisitive. I just uh, wanted to know about his program and what he did to get it to where it is now what he's doing to sustain it what he's doing to you know for the future um really just dug into him uh as a coach you know just really just pulled him apart and he was really open man he was awesome we went for an hour and a half uh it was a thorough talk it was deep um he was like i said he was as open as any college coach has ever been you've, you've heard the talk so yeah uh, i think it's high quality the uh there's um there's like a it's almost 15 minutes i think clip of just underwater kicking mm -hmm. um a, a lot about colin stewart obviously um and and his kicking but uh a drill progression um a training type of progression mm -hmm. uh, that he uses um for underwater dolphin kick throughout the whole entire year so uh, some unbelievable stuff in that podcast um a little bit longer than normal for a college coach on top of that um so check that out tomorrow that will drop and what else? We got one more thing to tell everyone next week. You and I uh, have been invited down to Texas to record Eddie Reese. We're going go yeah! to go. Yeah! Texas. <laughs> so uh, we are going to start. The, we're going to kick off the college season at the uh, at their inner squad meet. Yep. So um, that's where we'll be next week. Uh, until then, check out the pod tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. See you. Bye. Bye.